All right, Steve Ion refusing to sign to a label in his 20s. I should get paid the most. The end. Mic drop. There's actually a drop mic on the ground right there. I'm not going to drop it. You know, I care about this microphone. It costs money. I'm not going to... I'm not going to drop my microphone. I could never understand why anybody would get paid more than me for my work. Amen, my beautiful little guitar player friend. From the very beginning, Vi felt the need to protect this music. In a recent interview with Vintage Rock Pod, Vi explained, I didn't want to be subjected to anybody else's decision about anything. I just felt in a position of vulnerable... V vul <laughs> vulnerability. Vul Why is this a hard word for me right now? Vulnerable. If I had to depend on a record company. At the moment, Vi just felt the need to play his guitar and to record a, del a deluge of the songs that were coming out of his mind. He didn't want to deal with anything else, but history had a different play in the book. So, okay, I understand this part because, you know, as an artist, you want to spend time on being the artist. And that's where the label kind of comes in and be like, hey, you know, you, you do your music thing and we take care of the rest, like, uh, you know, grabbing your money and your balls. Uh, <laughs> so that I understand. When the time was right, Vi started shopping around for a record label who would help record and sell his music. He landed a label called Enigma Smegma and got the standard record deal everyone else got and he wasn't thrilled. When I read the deal, I was just stunned. It was like $10,000 advance and they would own the record and they give me 25 cents per record. And I had to recoup the 10000 advance from my 25 cents. I'm like, what? What is that? They saw me come in, some stupid kid. I took it to my attorney and said, no, Steve, this is a conventional record deal. And this is a good one. They're offering you an advance. And I said, F that. No, because I didn't feel right to me. Why should they also get so much more? I mean, if you listen to it like this, it, it makes so much sense. You know, obviously, Steve, I was a young kid at the time and maybe not as recognized as today. Back then, you didn't have anything else. You didn't have internet. You, you didn't have the marketing power as you do today. So... You know, a guy like Steve Vai, he basically could have taken the deal just to become huge. He basically recorded his own albums and he went straight to the distributors instead, just bypassing the labels. I mean, back then, I would assume that, you know, standing up against the labels would be even, you know, much more of a big thing than it is today because now everyone's releasing music from... You know, for, for, from everywhere. It's so easy to release music now. But back then, I mean, I imagine it being a very, very big step in the right direction for, you know, self-sustained musicians. Otherwise, the labels were the only way to, you know, get out there and become famous and big. So, Steve I, the OG man, much respect.